Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. How are you all doing, gang? Welcome back once again to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where I offer a platform for everyone to share how technology is transforming their business. From solopreneurs, startup founders, CEOs of Fortune 500 companies, to celebrities such as Gary Vaynerchuk, Wendy Williams and William Shatner. We've had them all on this podcast, and I do think that that eclectic mix works a treat. But today's guest is the king of outsourcing and he has the crown to prove it and he and his team use technology to help agency owners and their clients schedule leads into appointments by using their virtual call center essentially they provide weekly calls for their clients and remove any follow-up on leads so their clients can focus on growing their business And it's a fantastic story that took him from the US to Colombia and managing a team in the Philippines. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to Florida, where James Baskin is waiting to tell us all about Outsource Kings. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Yep. So my name is James King Baskin, and I am the owner of Outsource Kings. And what we do is we help agency owners and their clients follow up on their leads and their clients' leads so that way they can focus on their business. So I'm curious, looking at Outsource Kings, what problems did you set out to solve right from the beginning? So the biggest thing that we set out to solve is getting clients' time back. A lot of clients get stuck in the follow-up process. We notice clients either get stuck in the outcome of the follow-up, they, they chase leads, they get stuck in the chase and they don't focus on new business, or they don't even do that at all. And you know their advertising efforts, all the leads just never get called at all. So it's either one or the other. Either they're stuck chasing old leads, getting upset, you know, saying clients, clients suck, you know, I'm stuck chasing so-and-so, or they just ignore everything and they don't call the leads. And so we fill that gap. So we call the leads for them and schedule them into appointments. If they're stuck chasing them, we take over the chase for them so they don't have to worry about it and they just have a booked calendar. And if they're not calling their leads at all, as well as their client is not calling leads, we fill that gap also. And what's the story behind Outsource Kings? Because one of the things I've noticed on everyone I've spoken to on this podcast is there's always a story behind it. So I'm kind of curious, Was were, were you affected by time stealers in the past or a lack of focus? Or, or what was it that put you on this road? Yeah, great question. And I'm, I'm glad you said time stealers because we actually used an ad angle way, way, way back when. I use it every single Christmas. If you're familiar with the, the Home Alone picture of the you know, Macaulay Culkin with his face. And I, I put myself on it and said, beware of time thieves. So <laughs> glad, and I'll, I'll have to send you that. Um, it's a really good image that my graphics team made. And how Outsource King started, to be quite frank, is I had an insurance agency and I had problems that our clients have, which is I was out and about in the field, so to speak, selling insurance door to door. This is probably about three to five years ago, we've only been around for two years. And I first used outsourcing in my own business before I created Outsource Kings. And so that's why I have experience to back up what I did for multiple years. And so what we would do with my insurance agency is we would cold call seniors for Medicare supplement insurance, and I would go door to door to my appointments. And one of the questions we would ask the seniors was, what kind of car do you have in the driveway? This is on top of a bunch of additional questions, you know, how much in premium are you spending? Um, you know, how old are you, et cetera. And then we would schedule the appointment. Girls in the Philippines would do it for me. And so what would happen is if I didn't see that car in the driveway, it meant they weren't home. And so I would keep on driving. And this meant I didn't have to waste my time. And, you know, I hated, I hated getting stood up. So I incorporated that question. And so when I would go out, I would sell insurance all day long. And then my team would cold call and they would just schedule my whole entire my day. And so eventually people in the online community, because I was in, I'm very involved in, 
insurance groups online, social media marketing groups online, digital marketing, et cetera. And other people would, would ask me, I mean, I literally had people like fighting to be like, hey, can you run my leads for me? Just because they wanted some kind of testimonial based on, you know, me running their leads. They knew that I could actually sell. They knew that I would work the leads. They knew that someone would call the leads versus, you know, trying to find a client that never does nothing with the leads. And so I started doing that. You know, we had our first $10,000 a month when I started working Facebook leads. This is like three years ago, back when it was like the cream of the crop. And so I started growing my business and it's kind of like I had like an internal moment where I was like, man, I don't like driving two hours each way to go sell insurance on the hopes that I'm going to sell a policy. And, you know, I had this team, I think I had like three girls working for me at the time. And, you know, I was still trying to find my way with outsourcing and hiring and firing people consistently, you know, never really had like a steady team. And people started asking me, hey, can, can you teach me how to hire my first virtual assistant? And so, you know, I started recording my, my training sessions. And then when my first clients, you know, we, we, for the first and only time I ever sold anything over PayPal. Um, and I sold a thousand dollar consultant service. And um, I was like, wow, you know, that was really quick and easy money, so to speak. And, and so that was when I had a different company name and, and outsource Kings. And, you know, if, um, if I have to mention this again, or we have to, you know, put this somewhere else, outsource Kings, the name itself really was a troll. It was a, it was a, it was a play on words to um, make fun of politics because I didn't want to choose, you know, Republican or Democrat. And I said, what's something that will stand out that will get a laugh. And uh, I know you're in, in UK, so maybe you'll find this funny, more funny than people here in America. And I said, in America, we've never had a King. And I said, this, this is great. A King and, pe and people were already calling me King. They said, you are you're the king of outsourcing. <laughs> and, 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 and so people, they came up with the name naturally. And so I said, okay, and this was, um, we're in 2020 right now. So this was, I think, two or three years ago. And we have like our local elections. So it wasn't like the presidential elections. And I'm definitely going to be doing something once things go back to normal, um, making fun of the elections that's going on in 2020 here in America. But back then it was local elections. And I, I, I bought a yard sign. And I was designing the yard sign. I was like, oh, what, what can I do with it? Oh, I can create a stick figure. And so I created a stick figure and I was like, I'm going to do the background. And I was able to make a mountain background. And that was to, you know, kind of look like the Philippines. And I was like, let me see if I can find a crown. Oh, they got a crown. So I put a crown on the guy's head and he's like walking through the mountains in this like yard sign. And then I was like, let's, let's do this. Let's do a yard sign that tells people to vote for me. Vote James King, James Baskin for outsourcing King. And then I had the bright idea to, uh, at the time I had um, a girl I was seeing and she took photos of me all throughout my city. To, and I was like, if I take a bunch of photos, it will look like my yard signs everywhere. And it was just like hundred percent Brandon. And it was just me making fun of the election. And, um, and that's just kind of like how we, we got, we got the ball rolling. You know, we, we, we did a bunch of exposure, a bunch of engagement and, um, and then that was like the initial like beginning of Outsource Kings, like day one type of stuff. A great story. And on this tech podcast, what I try and do is bring on, uh, we do have a lot of startup founders listening. What I try and do is try and help teach and inspire them through the stories of others on here. So as you're on, I've got to ask, what have been your biggest struggles along the way and, and how did you overcome them? Yeah, I mean, phew. Long list, I, I, right? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm going through my stuff right now where I'm talking about on my own Facebook journey, the hero's journey. I'm sure you're familiar with something like that. Yeah. And I'm, I'm posting about that. And, and, and I can remember clearly a couple years ago, just alone in my room, crying, thinking like, is this ever going to work? Like, is this ever going to work? Like, even in like, you know, having a, a partner at the time and, and, and a girlfriend, so to speak, and, and, and being like, you know, is this ever going to work? And the biggest struggles I had was when I, I was this like tyrant of a boss, this dictator, this just mean person. 
And I've had teams as large as 10 people at times. And I get more done now with a smaller team than I did when I had a larger team. And I remember one time I had this, this team meeting and it was like everyone quit after the call because I was that out of my, my mind. Didn't even know what I was doing, but yet I was like, you know, yelling at people. And um, let me tell you something, when you have people that, you know, tell you that, you know, they, they can't work with you anymore and you have client fulfillment and you're stuck there and you're like, not sure how the work's going to get done. So now you're, you know, might owe money to people in terms of like refunds if this work doesn't get done. Now you don't even have a team anymore that you spent, you know, hundreds of hours building and you're stuck there left in your cups, so to speak, you know, it's all only you. And that's a lot, that's a, that's a bad, hard blow to, to, um, to deal with. And, um, through those moments, you know, you go through enough of those, either you quit, fail, or you change how you are. And, um, you know, so in, in terms of like struggle early on, like I had to learn to trust and show more respect to the people that work for me. You know, I had to learn how to be a boss. I had to, you know, go through failure of making mistakes with a team. You know, sure, I've had people that I trusted too much and they took advantage. But, you know, a lot of the, the, the good employees, I never, I never gave them the trust that they deserved. And, you know, the moment they saw a better opportunity, they, they left. And, you know, that, that, that does a lot to uh, your heart and soul, you know, when, when you have someone that, you know, leaves you and they tell you that, like, you need to change or they don't tell you anything at all. That was the worst when I wouldn't hear anything at all. And then it's like, you know, I'm, I'm calling the person, I'm messaging. And then it's like, you know, pleading and begging and, 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 and just nothing. And, um, but I'd say that was probably like one of the largest struggles. And then the other side would be people that took advantage of me. You know, they work in multiple jobs or people that, you know, I'd have, I'd have, um, I was going through some old stuff and I saw just like, how many people I taught some of this stuff to and are making ridiculous amounts of money. And then now all of a sudden they're the expert and I don't get any credit. And, you know, those, those kind of moments I think are what, you know, makes and defines them. You can either play the victim, which I've definitely played at times, but I've realized is when you play the victim, you, you never, you never get ahead, you know, sure. You might find an audience that listens, but, truth of the matter is no one cares no one cares at all and if anything it makes you look weak and um you know the strength is when you continue and you say okay cool you know they're going to copy me and what i've found is when you do continue those people end up coming back anyways and you can charge them way a lot more money now because now they're coming back to you and you know they've tried to do it on their own or they've tried to copycat you and and they've shown their hands, so to speak. And it's like, Oh, okay. You want to come back? Well, guess what? You know, I don't, I don't want to work with you. Or you can say, guess what? It's, you know, X amount of dollars an hour for me to consult with you or such and such. And so, you know, and we're seeing that now with people that, you know, were, you know, like the king of like, (laughs) like their own mind, so to speak, coming back, asking me for help. And it's, it's, it's just an interesting position to be in. And let's be honest, there's only one king of outsourcing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, a funny, funny story. And um, I, I, I self-titled myself that, and yeah. there already was another guy self-titled. And, <laughs> and, 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 and he is a, a great guy, and, and he does something similar in what we do. And I'm not going to, you know, harp too much on him, but I, um, I do respect this guy a lot. And I never had a conversation with him. We're in a similar mastermind with a, like a, a, a coach that we both have. And so we run in similar circles and, um, I got a message and this is when it really hit me. Like, cause sometimes, you know, like we don't give ourselves credit for how well we're actually doing in life, you know, especially in the, like the digital marketing world. If like, if it's just you, like, you're not getting messages. I mean, I, I, we, we get some, but like, it's not often that people are just like, thank you so much for saving my life type of thing. We, we don't get those kind of messages that often. And I got a message from a lady 
and uh, she wanted to have me on her podcast. And she said, so and so um, told me you'd be good to have my podcast. And I'm, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, this dude literally like runs a 70 person team and out and outsource and like is like the OG godfather, like the godfather to me in terms of like, like outsourcing. And it was cool. And she was like, Hey, so and so recommended you. He said that he's been watching your stuff and that you're a stand up guy. And it was like, wow. You know, I mean, I've never had a conversation with the guy. Um, we, I've never given him any money. I've never, you know, and, and he was watching me and, and I, I thought that was like, that was like the validation I, I needed to be like, you know, like I'm getting noticed in, in this industry. And, um, you know, it was kind of like a, um, if you know, like basketball, like, uh, when Kobe Bryant entered the league and like Michael Jordan and him, you know, played together for the first time. And it was like, Michael Jordan was like, okay, I see. You. And kind of like, you know, gave him his respect, so to speak. And it kind of felt like that, like, like a, a Michael Jordan that's like older and me, like Kobe Bryant in his first or second year, so to speak, getting, getting that, uh, you know, honor from like, from a great. Love it. And I also enjoy sharing stories outside of Silicon Valley on this podcast as well. And you've got a great story there because I believe you're talking to me in Florida at the moment. You live in Colombia and your team's in the Philippines. Uh, can you share the story behind that as well? Yeah. So for anyone listening right now, this is currently in America, what we call the Rona season or the COVID-19 season, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it. So I am stuck in Florida right now. Not a bad place to be stuck at um, until Columbia opens up the borders, until life goes back to normal. But normally, any other time, I am in Columbia most of the year. I have to go back and forth every three months. And I just fly into Fort Lauderdale and I just you know hang out for a week. And I got friends there in Miami. And I um, go back to Columbia and uh, Cali, Columbia. And my team is in the Philippines. We have a team in the Philippines that they are all home base. They are all mothers. And at the time of this recording, I just found out one of the guys that works for me is a soon to be expected father. And so they get to stay home with their kids. They get to work from home. And, you know, I think there is a lot of beauty behind that so they can spend time with their family. And so I'm down in Colombia also trying to recreate what I'm doing in the Philippines. And so one of the beauties of that is I can spend time living my day, learning Spanish, and at the same time trying to recreate in Colombia what I have in the Philippines. And so I ended up in Colombia because I had some people that worked for me down there and I wanted to check it out. And the Philippines... You know, I I heard from the first person that I should start outsourcing there that I spoke to. And I, you know, just kind of went through and and started outsourcing to the Philippines. Love it. And I also read that you outsource outsource your Facebook activities. So can you tell me a little bit more about that and the kind of value you you get from doing that? Yeah. So I want to say Facebook and social media and email. And I want to be completely upfront with you, Neil. And this podcast was actually set up through outsourcing. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. So uh, my team, we created an email account and we started messaging people that were on podcasts. And, I, and, I, and I'm, and I'm going to share this method pretty soon. So I want to you know, be upfront with you and share this because I think you'll enjoy this. We set out and we made a, a tracker, like a list on how to track everything. And we, 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 we wrote out anyone that was like a major influencer, you know, your Gary Vaynerchuk, your Grant Cardone's, et cetera, and go down the list. And we looked at any podcast that these people were on and we looked to, on that person's website and you're probably thinking like, oh, this is exactly what my website is. And we, we looked on the contact form and how to contact that person. And so I think we had contacted you and we, we've contacted hundreds of people. And we got emails from people and then, you know, it's all in the follow-up. And so we started following up with people. And, and then um, about a month ago, we got the calendar link from you. And I was like, sweet, you know, and when I get a calendar link, it's a, it's a green light. It's a go. Yeah. And so we got the green light 
And so here we are, and I wanted to at least give the listeners some insight on how that happened. So with Facebook, what we do is we are messaging people when it's their birthday. And so we are essentially, I, I do remote access to my girls in another country, and I have a laptop that has access to my Facebook, and I don't share passwords, and they use my computer. So they get to stay at their house in the Philippines, and they use my computer. They go into my computer. They also will send out emails on my behalf. That's how we do the podcast stuff, and they I get booked on podcasts, and they will also go into my messenger, and they will follow up with people on Facebook Messenger, and anyone that is struggling, go into your Facebook Messenger yourself and and then you will find business. I, I did this myself before I outsourced it. And I literally one day just said, okay, I'm going to message everyone back. And I spent like three to four hours. And before the end of the week, I added like an extra $2,500 of income to my monthly residual just by messaging people back. You know, I had to sit on a bunch of calls with people that were time wasters, but you know, I sifted through it and I found good clients from it. And so now I outsource that. And what we'll do is we'll wish the people happy birthday. The girls will do this. Like I was watching a movie with the family last night while one of the girls was wishing people happy birthday. And I can see her on my computer, so I know what she's doing. And I always like to do that just in case I needed to jump in. Um, and they'll wish them happy birthday. Little funny story. I've gotten dates with girls from people <laughs> outsourcing. Girls message, like the, my, my, my team in the Philippines literally having a conversation with girls. And then I'd be like, let me take this over real quick. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? We should hang out this Friday. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, I've, you know, gotten lucky, gotten some dates with some girls. And, and, but the majority obviously is the client calls. I just had a call with a guy. I had a call with a guy last night and then a, a, a friend of mine in Puerto Rico and me and her were catching up. And all of it was from my team wishing them happy birthday in their messenger. And so, you know, without getting too, too far into like exactly our process, but like just like an overview, you know, I've seen people that have 3000 friends and 30 people might wish them happy birthday on their wall. Yeah. And so I can't imagine what the percentage of people that are messaging them, maybe no one. And when we message someone, you know, a lot of times we'll get left on red, which is fine. You know, we're not looking for the people that aren't interested. We're looking for the people that want to talk. And I've had, you know, like I said, I had a girl yesterday. She was like, I'm walking the dog right now. Give me a call. You know, I called her, called up. And another guy, he was like, he's like, aren't you that outsourcing guy? Um, you know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking to uh, find work and cold call right now. And can I, can I talk to you? And like, so now he's asking me and it's on his birthday. You know what I mean? Yeah. And all of it starts just from a conversation. Well, I love that. I love the hustle behind it as well. And another tactic that I've seen you use is, are you like focusing on one niche in the beginning and then growing inside that niche? Can you tell me a bit about that as well? Yeah. Yeah. So one of my principles that I believe in in the beginning when you grow a business is, you know, obviously you have to find your way like we did and I'll, sh I'll share that in a second, but focusing on just one thing and getting very good at that one thing. If you try to focus on everything, you're not going to be a, ma a master of any of it, but focusing on one thing and particular, even focusing on that one thing inside of one niche, and you'll be viewed as the expert inside of that niche. And so I thought, I mean, you, you think you have a big game plan and then all of a sudden reality shows up. I thought when I, I was a life insurance agent and I thought all these people were going to hire me to do cold call and an appointment setting for, for insurance agents. And that never happened. And instead, all these mortgage brokers in the loan officer space all wanted my services. It was crazy. So all of them wanted my services. And so it's like, you know, go where the money and the attention's at. And, you know, had to let go of my ego and, and insurance expertise in my mind and started working with loan officers. I started studying and studying and studying like that industry. And, um, you know, a uh, large loan officer group called the Legion of Loan Officers you know, they gave me a shout out in the group and it was like, boom, overnight, like all these people were messaging me. And um, one of our early clients, we called for a course in the loan officer space and we generated them five figures, $12,000 in the first month of working with them. 
And that was for a loan officer course, teaching loan officers how to make Facebook ads. And so this legions of loan officers group had an event last March, you know, we're obviously we're in April right now and they had an event last March and it's crazy to even think about it. It's a year ago now. And I remember like, it's crazy how much can happen in a year. And I remember I was doing all so, so all right in business. And I was like, you know what, let me just, it's the events in Miami at the time I lived in Tampa. So it's about a four hour drive. And I was like, let me just take this drive, go to this event. You know, the event was like $500 to go to. And I was going to get a hotel and X, Y, Z and et cetera. And I was like, let me just do it. And I did that. And then from that, you know, we, I, um, I got shout out from the stage from one of our clients. I had other clients that had left us, returned to us. And it really just showed like how many people in that industry knew my brand. And so, you know, it's kind of funny. We were actually supposed to have another event last month, obviously Corona happened and they had to cancel that event. And, you know, I was, you know, going to be speaking at that event, you know, and I was supposed to meet with my clients. I was supposed to shoot a video life happened and you know, that never happened. And, but in the beginning, I think there was a huge importance in focusing on one niche and then expanding outward. And you and I were talking beforehand about you attended a Magento conference. We actually worked in the e-com space with someone that was doing Magento stuff and in, in, in the cold calling aspect. And, um, you know, then we started branching out doing all kinds of stuff. And right now we are in the loan officer space, realtor mortgage space, solar contractors, uh, gyms. We have UFC gym that we manage, you know, they're a franchisee that, you know, multiple people own the, the rights to the names and they can start their own gym. We have, there's always one, uh, we have doctor's office. We have a doctor's office that we manage that is, you know, doing anywhere from 30 to 50 leads a day. And um, we're calling for them. And we have home services, people that are doing remodeling, construction, and insurance agents. We have um, auto and home insurance agents. And we just expanded out. But first, we focused on one niche um, before we tried to, you know, serve every niche. And I also believe you've got a new book out. So can you tell me a little bit more about that? And also the creation process behind it. Is there anything you can share on that too? Yeah, so I, I definitely want to um, mention my publisher's name and um, highly recommend him. His name is Mark Imperial. And he has this process down. He's actually a former trainer and coach for Dan Kennedy's program. And so he's, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with Dan Kennedy. And He's, you know, worked with Dan Kennedy and he actually has a book he um, did with Dan Kennedy actually. And so I definitely want to give him a shout out because he has made this process incredible. I actually, in about an hour from now, I actually have a call with him and we're finishing up the book. The book, uh, we don't have the full title just yet. And we're basically in the last chapter of it. I think it's going to be a hundred pages. It will be a physical book. Obviously it's going to be about outsourcing. And, you know, I wanted to put something out for, you know, the new guy or just as a piece of, you know, content that someone can consume. And, you know, when they're first starting off, whether it's hire a virtual assistant, whether it's outsourcing, I want to be the first piece of content that person consumes. And I think if it's in a book form, what a perfect place to start. You know, even if it's just me sending a book, I don't mind paying the, the ship into someone and being like, hey, if you're thinking about outsourcing, you know, after they ask me a bunch of questions, I recommend you read this book right now, you know, because they might not be ready for my services and to hire me, but you know, the book, at least I'll be that first piece of content. And in terms of the process, man, I, I, I didn't know what to expect going into it with Mark. And um, I'm glad that he has pushed me. I've wanted to stop. I've wanted to quit. I've not wanted to continue at times just to be truthful you know, just like anything, it's, it's, it's a lot of work and I'll, I'll hop on calls with him for like an hour to an hour and a half. And I'll literally just feel exhausted afterwards. And what he does is he asks me questions and we keep it to one topic and we structure the book, you know, with like a, like a rough draft type of structure. And then he records the calls and then he gives them to his partner and then his partner listens to it. And then she writes the content from that. And so you know, if it was me trying to write everything out, we'd probably still be on page two now. Yeah. But, you know, with this process, it allows, you know, multiple people to be involved and them to understand my logic, my thought, my thoughts. They listen to the recording. They understand what I'm talking about. 
and then they produce the chapter, you know, from an hour to an hour and a half of content. Wow, that's great. I'm going to have to check that out myself. And well, Assuming a few months from now when the book is out, and hopefully we're in a post, uh, post-COVID-19 post world, what, what do you see next for your company in the next year and beyond? Yeah, so one of the big things that we're doing right now with a software called uh, Go High Level, it's a CRM management that a lot of people are you know, hype about right now, is we are going to completely manage with a virtual assistant dedicated from nine to five for each person's go high level. And that's going to basically put us into the couple thousand dollars a month category of managing someone's essentially from soup to bolts, email, text message, phone calls. We would manage for every single client uh, versus, you know, what we're doing now. And, you know, what we're doing now is, is, is great. You know, we've, you know, we scaled, you know, five figures a month and above and it's, it's awesome. And, you know, but there is just, you know, only so much of a limit we're at, but I think what we're going to start doing is we're going to start actually offering a person to each client we work with. And um, I definitely see myself in the Philippines, you know, provided that, you know, countries open back up, I'll definitely be in the Philippines and recruiting people and we will be managing people that will manage a client's whole CRM. And there is a lot of value in that. And obviously that's why we'll charge more money. Fantastic. And for anyone listening that would like to find out more information about anything we've talked about today, so that can be your website, how to contact your team, and equally the publisher that we mentioned as well. Can you share or can you point everyone in the direction of how they can get there? Yes. Yeah, so I always, I always refer to Facebook first. And my name is James King Baskin on Facebook, you know, shoot me an ad, shoot me a, you know, a new friend request or a message. And then also my Facebook group is outsource O U T S O U R C E Kings with an S K I N G S. And that's outsource Kings Facebook group. And, uh, you know, we have like over a hundred people in there right now and it's growing and we, we love to have people that are engaged with it. You know, I don't invite anyone to it. You have to, you know, request to join it. And so the Outsource Kings Facebook group, my website, OutsourceKings.com, and then our YouTube channel, Outsource Kings as well. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. So much value in today's interview with you there from focusing in on one niche in the beginning and growing outside that and growing inside that niche to expanding other niches and growing, but also building and outsourcing a team and outsourcing those daily tasks and even parts of your mind. You seem to have it all completely nailed down. The only thing missing is a king of outsourcing Elvis style jumpsuit, but maybe you've got that in, in mind already. I don't know, but <laughs> thanks for joining me today and i'd love to stay in touch and we'll speak again soon hey, thanks neil i've just seen a photo of james baskin and he really is the outsource king he has a crown and everything and it even reminded me of an old depeche mode video for the track enjoy the silence where the lead singer is hiking dressed as a king so james if you are listening to this podcast you know what you need to do <laughs> and also as i said that What's also popped in my head is James Baskin, Outsource King. Is there any kind of link between you and the Tiger King and his arch nemesis, Carol Baskin? I guess that's a podcast for a completely different day. But seriously, though, I love this conversation because, yes, tech is at the heart of everything that they do. But behind all of that is a very human story of how Outsource King started. And I can't thank him enough for coming on and also sharing the struggles along the way and how they overcame those challenges that they encountered. And it's fascinating as well how he, his journey took him from the US to Colombia and managing a team in the Philippines, where he also has a charity for Philippines for the, where he also has a charity for kids and his staff too. However, the most valuable thing I took from the conversation with James today is the need to focus in on one niche right from the very beginning, and then growing inside that niche and expanding to other niches and growing. If I look back and try and join up the dots, that's exactly what I've done here. It wasn't part of a master plan. It kind of happened by accident when where I ended up leaving the IT job behind and becoming the tech writer, tech podcaster guy. But I also love how James went on to build an outsourcing team and outsourced his own daily tasks and even parts of his own mind too. But Enough of my rambling. 
What did you take away from today's episode? Email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk, where you'll find 1,200 interviews. If you scroll to the bottom, you've got all the social channels and everything else you'll need if you wanted to find me or had any questions that you wanted to send me. And finally, of course, my book is officially on sale on Amazon, where I'm going to be exploring the lessons learned on innovation after watching hundreds of TED Talks. The book is called Great TED Talks Innovation, but I'm sure you've had more than enough of me for one day. I don't want to be that guy that outstays his welcome. So I'll walk off into the sunset now and say thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.